All right, hello YouTube. Welcome back to more from the depths. You join us with the work in progress airship. It's drawing a little close to completion now. We're going to try and finish it in this episode. Uh, I've been doing some work on it. We have a slightly uh, upgraded engine layout. More thrusters. I've been upgrading the internals at the back to be a lot less uh, slapdash and a lot more actually functional. We have some uh, decoys on the back now. We have a uh, flare and radar decoys. Which I think are actually not on a daggered fire, which should be. Yeah, they're quite powerful decoys, that should be fine. Uh, and I think really one of the last things I have to do with this one is to um and save it is to uh add the uh final defensive systems. Now originally I was planning to have laser active defenses. Don't know that I've really ended up much space for that. I could try and cram something in here, but it's going to be very cramped. So the thing it said is we'll maybe go for planar shields on this one. I know they're a pain to set up, but might as well. What do you call it? Uh, go through it with you guys and show you what you need to, to do with those, really. Now we're going to be focusing primarily on frontal shielding because this craft is meant to point at the target and fire on it. So I think we'll place them here. This craft is going to be reliant much more on shields than its actual armor. Kind of the uh, polar opposite of the battleship, really. Now, is that actually long enough to cover the very bow of the ship? No, that needs to be a block forwards or so. Here, technically. Little bit of an iffy spot, given it's right behind an engine that will draw in shots, but we'll do what we can with that. Yeah, and then as with angle, it's an angle that's so just about covers the nose. 22. I think we're 21, maybe. We won't change the elevation angle, and we'll put the effect front up as high as possible. Frontal shields at least need to be very strong. Rear shields and side shields, not so much. Those who should line up perfectly. Ah, uh, nearly. It's 22 then. Okay. That's the majority of the front of the ship covered. We should also definitely have something on the, uh, the particle cannon. I am a little worried that we get there, we'll get it shot, actually. Uh, let's put it... Part of me wants to put it just right in the front. We'll try putting it right in the front. This one doesn't need to be that big comparatively. Try 15 by 15, see how that looks. Yeah, and we'll do... Because the angle we're at, that should <coughs> allow it to have a pretty high chance of just deflecting shots away completely. And designing the shielding with the uh, the angle we're meant to be facing in mind. In theory, that should deflect shots up and then ricochet them off the front of the armor. We'll add additional shielding here beside the uh, engine of the sails. Why can I not place? Oh, what? Oh, I've clipped inside the gun. I can tell. Right. Put these here. These don't need to be huge again. Uh, keeping the size down is a good idea because that keeps the uh, energy cost down to actually run them. Set to zero for now. We will set that angle back to... Uh, 20. That's some power. Okay, if you keep your shields low and close to the hull, so they don't reflect against explosions on inertial fuses so well, they will um, keep the power drain quite a lot lower. Really? Uh, oh, we're inside the gun again. We'll have to go on the exterior. I wouldn't normally recommend shields on the exterior, but I think we'll be okay. What's that mean? 312. Got plenty of power at the moment. The one thing to check will be the pad right after the uh, pack cannon fires, because that does drain a lot of power. And I don't really expect attack from directly below. Might be worth putting something in just in case. Put 
thing. I should cover the uh, around the side of the ship. Set a couple of those. We'll change the colours on these and we will try and make the uh, generators themselves blend into the hull a little better later. I'm going to focus on getting everything covered first. This one can be full width. Okay, and then I think maybe we could possibly forego uh, reshielding entirely because we're not expecting to really get hit from the back. We're pretty quick. That one could be strength six. It's on the rear, even though it's the core of the ship, I'm again not expecting that bit to get hit as much. We should be taking hits from the front, primarily. What we will do is one on the top of the bridge to make sure no uh, plunging fire drops straight through it. Perhaps with the angles we come out, it might be worth having one on the front of the bridge as well. Doesn't need to be very tall at all. So it's primarily going to be focused on a shielding the front window, basically. Okay. We'll go with that. We'll set the opacity down so we can actually see what we're looking at. Maybe a little bit more than that. I like to be able to sort of see that they're there. Just about. That makes it a little easier to tell when they've gone down. Yeah, you can just about see them. Okay. Try turning god mode off. Let's throw a paddle gun at it. Let's see how this goes. Just want to keep an eye on engine drain. Yeah, it's still got 4,000 power even when it's uh, in flat out. Okay, destroyed that with no damage, we'll take it in return. Hopefully our missile decoys will be enough to um, repel those as a weapon type. So our only real nemesis should be um, either mass missiles or um, uh, pack cannons. And really there's not much you can do to defend against pack cannons. Let's try loading in. A Twingar... why not? A Tyrannic. Let's test it against the worst of the worst and see how this goes. Now, I don't know that it will do great against the Tyrannic because it has Disruptor Shells. Disruptor Shells, what am I saying? But we'll give it a try. It doesn't have yet at all its repair systems. Not great performance against the Tyrannic. So let's try. We've been saying about doing a mixed fleet for a little bit. Let's set this up as a bit of a test run. It's the sort of thing it'll operate with. How much does it actually cost at the moment? It's not tremendously expensive, actually. It's less than a Skyray at the moment, so that might still be viable actually at that cost. Let's try setting it up with a pair of... where is it? There they are. A pair of hatchets, which I thought were named. Did we name the AI and not the rest of them? No, apparently not. Well, they set up with a pair of those for um, Seawiz duty, because they've got the Seawiz lasers. Then spawn the tyrannic. Okay, that's looking a bit better with the screening from that. The hatchet's lasers are able to bring down a lot of the firepower that would be hitting them. While it can throw uh, heavier weapons back in exchange. Ooh, that's a good explosion. Actually, the hatchets are wrecking shop today. What do they? 
What do they feed these two? They're waiting to see that pack cannon in action to see what that does. Oh, yeah. That looked pretty reasonable. Let's punch the hole in the hull. What I'll also try quickly is three of them together to see how they work as a um, as a unit on their own, a bit like the uh, Sky Race, to see if they can operate in, in monotype units. But I think this might be the right idea. Support them with a couple of the hatchets that have our best laser defenses, and they also have the gun sea whiz. Okay, another hit with the energy cannon. The energy cannon is a 30 second charge up time. It is quite lengthy. But yeah, it does do quite significant damage, so... The main gun's working. Or is it the angle? Is it the angle it's at? Do I need to... I might need to adjust the pitch angle because I think it's... If you can try and sit... Yeah, if I make it hover a bit closer to the water, that should make sure the guns could definitely hit. Okay, maybe a hundred. But you should be able to pitch quite severely. I do I do want it to be able to put those guns down range. The rapid fire seems to do reasonably well as well. No, we doing? Yeah, it looks like it's working, I would say. They're not taking it down hugely quickly, but... Oh, that... That's good, we just hit the air. Uh... We are actually smashing... Yeah, we have actually destroyed it. Excellent work. Okay, so I think with that little AI tweak to make sure the main guns are also firing. Yeah, that is a nice weapon. I might change the colour on it, though. Let's... Let's go for blue. Get rid of that sort of light blue. Oh, we do actually have a cabin, I should mention. Can actually sit aboard it. I'm not going to make the same mistake I did with the sifter. Why are you trying to land? Why are you landing? What was that in aid of? Right, next thing we need. Repair boss. This should definitely be able to repair itself. And we'll add some repair tentacles as well, so we don't again hit the issue of our fleet being unable to repair itself post-battle. Some there, and some that aren't near the uh, fuel tanks. Some there. Some in the very no section. So I do want this to have reasonably potent self-repair. It worked on the Sky Rays. The AI uses it in their designs. It's clearly not considered too cheesy by the devs. Uh, let's some... Maybe on the back wall here. I don't know, I slap things on a bit in this game. You've probably noticed that already. I have a lot of designs where it's like, I could probably optimise this, but it's working well enough at the moment, so I will not worry too hard about it. Uh, oh, respawn. Respawn beacon would be good, actually. Let's have a respawn beacon on the ship so we can <laughs> respawn back to it. Uh, yeah, and then do I need anything else? Oh, we can do an orange in block. So when it uh, spawns, it actually, um... Knows where to, uh, to build one from. Let's put that... Back here. Uh, yeah, and I think... <laughs> see the warp bit, so it's like, oh no. I need warp capability to it. That would be quite scary. We could potentially add some decorations. Have a rear mast or something. Hmm. Cool. 
Mm, no, maybe not that one. Actually, where's this? There's a square one, right? That would look good. Yeah. Well, uh, lattice mast. That bought the rear radar. It does, yes. Mm. Don't really want that. I mean, maybe we just go with it. It's quite nice looking. Or maybe some exhaust, actually. That would look nice. Uh, funnels, yeah. Not there, apparently, because that's blocking an engine. Eh, maybe not. It doesn't look good, but not quite right. Oh, yeah, we turn. Yeah, that's fine. Um, hmm. If there's any other obvious things we could put on it, it would look nice. Wind last is probably not it. Uh, we could have some uh, covered deck sections. Uh, no, it might be okay. Might be okay as is. Uh, is there any other little bits we want to add? Do we want to add any simple weapons, systems, or anything? That's something like those guns, I suppose. It's just some, uh, it's a little extra forward facing fire pair. Not that I'm actually sure where I've really put them. Should just merge them into the side of the uh, frontal curve. Don't have to rebuild it. Maybe, maybe not unless. No, because they've got the thrusters there. Uh... Eh? Nah. Nah, we won't worry about that. I think we'll... Is there anything I'm obviously missing? So let's see what some little thresher side turrets. Look like one of Eggman's ships from Sonic Heroes or something. Uh, that'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, because it's not tremendously expensive either. I will have to get around to painting it at some point in the future, but... So we'll save this. Let's try three of them against the Tyrannic quickly. Let's see how they do. Again, see if they could be a sort of heavy sky ray in a sense, and they're not quite as fast or survivable, but they're more powerful directly, I think. But anyway, let's try three of them against the Tyrannic and see how we do. Hey, the blue particle beam looks good. Shells are working, or shields are working to some extent. Might be a good idea to have some EMP surge protection in that f nose section, since that seems to take the, take the hits. Stop the EMP rounds hitting the, um, the frontal shield generators. Oh, that's a point. I need to check. I use the the default AI, uh, like prefab, the one that's just got like a lot of the basics in it. What I do need to check is if that has um, aim point selection. Might be any other thing. I th assume it does. And did reasonable damage actually. They're not going down just yet. Oh, I never put uh, repair tentacles on it. I did need to do that. One of them's damaged quite badly. It's listing, but. Yeah, they got that decent self-repair rate. I can see that much. Again, so does this thing. I know it's got... It's literally self-repairing the guns as I watch it, so it's not like it's unfair. Are the decoys working? Not against that, apparently. Again, all the more reason to pair it with a hatchet that deploys forwards of it. We should take care of how we deploy these things as well. When we start fights, they should be deploying uh, behind everything else. I believe the uh, pack cannon should be doing reasonable damage at range. I don't know <coughs> quite how far off they are. The, the pack cannon is set to explosive shock. I can't remember if I said or not. But yes, we'll, we'll finish this test, and then assuming it goes well, 
quickly add those repair bots and then we'll load them into the campaign and we'll we'll set up a new fleet that uses them on the front lines and get it into the battle straight away maybe try and send it against the uh great hands base i think the forces we have in twin guard territory at the moment can handle the mopping up because even though we didn't destroy their or we destroyed their base they didn't die the twin guard i think oh maybe they have two oh of course now i think about it the twin so the twin guard are based around uh they're an ai faction oh i think the explosive shot cannon just hit the uh, hull. Um, and they are based around two supercomputers. I bet there's two bases. I bet they're unique in that aspect. I don't know for sure, but that's my guess. I reckon that could well be why they didn't die when we knocked out one base. Because they probably got a second one. Okay, they're not. Well, they're... Mostly not water landing. It should be okay even if they do water land, but uh, because they won't do it mid fight, and we can um, uh, what do you call it? We could just tell them to ascend again in the uh, map screen. And they'll do it. Uh, what we do need? When my brain catches up me, and I remember what it is. Repair bots. Repair tentacles. Even compact. And these things should be able to repair each other. But yes, I think the idea for these would be pairing with hatchets. So they have a little bit of um, automatic repair support. I'll maybe try and remember to paint them in between episodes, but I want to get uh, onto the campaign itself now. now. I don't know if we've got any fights immediately about to happen. Yeah, the Greytown's territory is quiet for the moment. These guys are doing okay over here. Listening. I think they're coming. Yeah, they're coming to repair the surface fleet. Listening. So have the sky rays push forwards a bit more again. Should just go. Out. And then push out. Moving out. Give them a bit of time to repair. At this base, do we still have a? We don't have a gatherer there at all. Where's our nearest one? Here. Listening. Right. Yeah, the second sky ray fleet died. Listening. Right. You need to start building our new crafts. Oh, you also need upgrading with this. Let's fill her up. Airship prototype. I also need to give it a proper name at some point. Hopefully I won't have to time lapse this one. Hopefully it'll be fairly quick. Looks like all the repair tentacles are going full strength pretty much anyway. It hasn't got any really uh, noodly bits on it that slow them down. And it, I think they are cheaper than the uh, current version of the Skyray. They are 20 something thousand. And the production model Skyray. Yeah, no, they're about 80,000, 70,000 is cheaper than the Skyray. Not survivable or fast, but I do believe they do more damage. More importantly, they're better at cracking heavy armor that the Skyray can get blunted on a bit. With those particle cannons, the main cannon is undefendable. No way to counter that one. Yeah, that was reasonably quick to put together. Where it goes. Hopefully quickly, but it is going. Listening. Moving out. Listening. Right. So if we build one thing it is, two airships and two hatchets, is what I'm thinking. No, not the old ships, there's millions of those and they don't work, right? Uh, in fact, I'll just summon him myself here. So, load vehicle. Uh, hatch heavy crew. Oh, there is a... There is called the hatch. I thought there was something weird going on there. Alright, load vehicle. Hatch it. So, we've got two hatchets. And now we want the... Uh, another ship. Prototype. 
Okay. Lots of repairs going on there. That might take a little while. How is stuff going to go? Yes, look, there it is. It's a, sec it's a second base. We knew it. Moving out. I can't believe it took me so long to remember that. They're literally called moving the out. Twin Guard. Yeah, if I remember correctly, there's something like two... Are they Scarlet Dawn supercomputers, I think? I genuinely can't remember. I think there may be like two Scarlet Dawn supercomputers that short out when they hit the water and become sentient or something. Okay, let's actually finish off the Twin Guard this time. Oh, wow, they've got a lot of... A lot of volume. Is that just because they've got a secondary base? Or is this one quite a lot bigger than the last one? Oh, that looks a little larger. Hmm. Yeah, so what have we got here? Is it another hive, or is this a different one? No, it's a Thanatos, right? Oh, this is different. This is heavier defended. Okay. Oh, that's interesting looking. What is this? Resource orb? AI? Hmm, not sure on that one. Engaging now. By the way, that thing is your target. This thing looks undefended, yeah. Yeah, I believe the Twin Guard is supposed to have like a double theming as well, like some of their craft have based on sort of one design style and one on the other, but I have to admit I couldn't tell you which one this was supposed to be. I'm guessing, though, this is the one that built the Tyrannic, looking at it, with these sort of gun mounts. So I, guess, I guess I can maybe read some of it. Uh, I believe the Tyrannic is based on is based on Nick, Nick Smart, I think, the uh, the creator of the game. I think that is a little nod to him with the naming. Oh, is, is he actually in torpedo range? No, not quite. Is the other one? The question I also don't know. Oh, God, is it a repair orb? No, it's being repaired. It's not a repair orb. In and of itself. I'm slowing down again. I hope it hasn't gone to slow-mo mode again. I was going to say. Might have been a magazine explosion. One of the Sky Rays has taken a bit of damage. That is my one. Excellent. Actually, that's not too bad, actually. Because that's the one that uh, can't hit this thing at the moment. This starts to really sink. Oh god, this thing's full of self-repair components. These drones, these are actually floating drones. They're not even uh, turrets. Is the air hidden inside that orb? Is that how it works? It looks like they're trying to fire on it. Or are they trying to fire through it? Hard to say at the moment. <laughs> Those torpedoes are really tried. They really are trying to get the hit, but it must be close enough in the water to the water that the sonar can track it, but not enough they can actually make contact, which is unusual. I'm not quite sure. Hundred percent what's going on there. Yeah, and it's building new ships as well. It's trying to bring reinforcements into the fight. I'm guessing the AI is in here somewhere. Oh no, they've lost the orb. Orbo has gone. I still don't know what it does, but they've lost it. I guess the docking port for it's uh, died. Who's this thing? What the heck is this? Genuinely, I've not seen this component before. What is that? Is that... Are they like new versions of the fort? Hang on, let's have a look at the build menu. Is that like the fortress thruster? Like a new version of it? No, because they look like that. What the heck are those green things? They're belching smoke, but. Could be decoration, but. And music's kicking in. Let's do your job, Sky Race. <coughs> Demolish it. They are weakening it. I 
Yeah, I think the lasers are... They do cons they do somewhat consistent damage. They're not quite good enough at sniping. I think it is primarily the um, the missiles on the Sky Race that have their main destructive, that their main destructive pair. Oh, low health warning for a fraction of a second. To repairs happened. I think this thing's wounded, unless it was just a subconstruct being built underneath it. Starting to strike the barrels on one of the main turrets now. It's a lot of engine power in this thing. My god. Look at this. They're running a lot bigger drives than we are. Maybe we've been running quite fuel efficient this whole time. Or I kind of assumed we weren't, but... Oh, I think we got it. Turrets popped off. Drone turrets are plummeting. They're still firing, though. Yeah, I see that message. I think we've done it. I think we destroyed the Twin Guard. At last. Oh, my God. Oh, God, look at that. Her wing's been caught out, but it's still going. <laughs> oh, do these things are zombies. You can't kill them. We just keep fighting. Well, that will certainly help our efforts a bit, because we'll only have to focus on one front now. Focus on snapping up the Twin Guard's remaining territory. Oh yes, we do have to destroy that thing still. But, considering it seems to have no weaponry on it at all, I can't imagine it'll be a problem. And I guess any drones, if there's still any of those kicking around. That's interesting. That drone turret's sticking around. It's not dying automatically. In fact, the other one's still there, too. That's fine. That gives the torpedo something to track. And speaking of... Is that there? Or is that something else? Not sure. By the way, it looks like that one's taking the brunt of the fire pan out. Yeah, they have still got a little surface drone as well that we'll need to knock out. Okay, that one's dead. Focus that, please. Engaging now. Turret popped off immediately. Yeah. Yeah, lasers might not be hugely powerful against some ships, but they're perfectly acceptable against uh, little things. I actually land a hit. I think that's the top of the one coming over. Oh my god, it's so chewed up. Oh, AI dead. Oh, barely had time to land a hit. Oh, well, that's fine. It means I'll go into the next one instead. I think that might be it. I think that might be the twin guard done. We can breathe a little on this side. Hey, that'll complete. Explosions everywhere. Right, are we going to get a death message? Is that it? Or are the twin guards still alive? I'm not seeing it. They've still got ships. Listening. That'll just take a Moving moment. Out. Let's move them back to here anyway. Moving out. Hmm. Anyway, we'll call the episode there. Seems like a good place to stop unless I get a message in a second that says Twin Guard destroyed. Hopefully you've all enjoyed, and I'll catch you all again next time where we'll look forward to actually deploying that airship. Bye for now.